Alpha. Hi there guys, my name is Vili Puertis. I go by Vili Puertis Auto. I'm a commercial car photographer and I'm going to be doing this three-part series for Sony. It's going to basically be covering everything with regards to automotive photography. In episode one, we're going to be talking about shooting with natural light. We're going to be talking about location scouting, the tools of the trade. Episode two, we'll be covering everything you need to know about shooting natural light mixed with artificial light and only using artificial light. Episode three will be where the magic happens. That is in Photoshop with regards to using different softwares, importing images and processing them and creating and telling a story with regards to the images that we shot. Stay tuned for more. Welcome to episode one, guys. We're going to be talking about building a portfolio, shooting of natural light and location scouting. My personal journey in commercial car photography started by shooting for friends. I started off by shooting from bikes to cars to even trucks. Literally, by playing around with friends' cars and family members' cars, I learned different ways of shooting, different techniques, and by doing that, I built a portfolio. From there on, it slowly moved on to shooting a friend's, friend's car and slowly got into the supercar market where I was shooting different cars in different locations for different manufacturers. I've been very fortunate to have worked with Pagani, with Rolls-Royce, McLaren and Aston Martin. And the only way by getting involved with those brands is by starting and building a portfolio. So I think it's very important that you start off by slowly building a portfolio for shooting for friends and family members and slowly getting your work noticed whether it's on Instagram or on a website. The biggest thing with regards to creating an image is telling a story. I feel in every image I create I'm trying to tell a story. Whether it is I'm having a girl walking up to a car um, as a lifestyle type of shot, whether it is I'm shooting a car and composing it onto a racetrack from a supercar's perspective, or whether it is I'm telling a lifestyle story with regards to a father and son taking a Sunday drive through the mountains of Cape Town. Location is a vital cruel rule for creating a nice composition and can, and can be a big impact with regards to the story you're trying to tell. I feel that shooting in an urban environment or shooting in a rural environment or even in an environment whether it's off-road or on a racetrack you can literally have your own creative juices flow and run and compose something that you would want to create. With regards to that, scouting locations is quite a tricky one, but can be done by being a bit creative. Whether you go into Google Earth, whether you go onto Adobe Stock to go and buy backgrounds that you can compose cars onto, you can literally use your own creative juices to create your image in whatever retrospect you would like to create it with. So be adventurous, venture out, whether you're going for a Sunday drive, take your camera with, shooting a background at sunset or at sunrise in the morning, or whether you go and literally go and scout looking for urban walls, whether it's a graffiti background, whether it's a nice house, whether it's a, an ocean background, be creative, take your camera with, shoot backgrounds, or just go and earmark different locations that you can go and create images going forward. Guys, today we're gonna to be covering natural light photography it's probably the easiest way to get into the game all you need is a camera with regards to a camera my weapon of choice is the sony a7r4 in my field and line of shooting i love the 61 megapixel full frame uh, sensor the quality of the images are world class it could be blown up it could be used for any platform that i would ever need it for and it does the job it's got phenomenal low light capabilities, so whether I can pull back shadows, I can also use it for bracketing. The bracketing settings on this camera is phenomenal. It's got the feature of actually pairing it with my phone, so I can fire this camera offhand by using my phone, actually viewing the image on my phone, doing adjustments on there without even touching the camera and causing any camera shake. So from a camera perspective, this thing is a beast. It does what it needs to do and I absolutely love it and would definitely recommend it. Guys, when it comes to lenses, my preferred lens of choice is the 24-105 from Sony. It's an f4 lens, which for me is more than enough because I shoot 90% of my images at 
F9 to F11. By doing that, I want to get the whole car in focus and not just a certain part and blowing out the background and with regards to bokeh. When it comes to that, we'll use a 50mm 1.8, then we can do detailed shots. But when it comes to bringing the whole car in focus, the 24105 does the job for me. And honestly, a very well priced lens and does the trick. It's an absolute beast. My second lens of choice is the beast of the G Master called the G Master 7200 f2.8 this lens is an iconic lens in sony's arsenal and i feel probably one of my favorite lenses of all time there is very few lenses that are sharper than this lens it's got capability low light capability with a 2.8 is phenomenal when it comes to shooting automotive photography when whether you are into shooting on a racetrack and you need the reach this is the ultimate lens i personally feel i feel that the Capability to shoot from 70 to 200 can change the perspective and the entire look of the photo. By standing back at 200, you can actually bring the background from behind the actual car, like you'll see in our images that we'll be doing. You can bring the mountains closer, which makes the car appear a little bit bigger and also bring the mountains to a scale where it looks and appears bigger. The reach of this lens is tremendous. The sharpness is off the scale. And I feel from a different, just to get a different look and feel to your image, this is definitely the way to go. Guys, when it comes to natural light car photography, one of the aspects that can destroy your image is reflections. Reflections is a major problem when it comes to shooting cars in natural light, as you have reflections, whether it's people standing close by, whether it's other cars passing, whether it's a building, or even ambient lights that are on that reflects off the car, can actually totally ruin the paint and the color of the car and actually the look of the photo. The biggest tool that you can use is a polarized filter. This polarized filter has saved me and definitely saved a lot of post work. Basically what it does, you screw it on the front end of your lens and you literally turn it till you see, you'll see eventually at a certain angle, the polarized filter will eliminate reflections. You then turn it to where you see the reflection disappear, you take a photo. If you want to get clever and post, you actually turn it, take a photo, turn it, take a photo, turn it, take a photo. By doing that, is you're literally eliminating the reflections or most of the reflections off the car. And it could also change the look of the sky, it also change the look of shadows. So I would say one of the crucial, crucial aids that you should definitely look at getting is getting yourself a polarized filter, strapping it onto the front of the Sony lens and making your life a lot easier. How's it guys? Today we're starting with our first segment. Our first segment is shooting a McLaren 570 GT in natural light. We're shooting pretty much just after midday uh, in the beautiful mountains of Cape Town. Basically going to run you through and how we set the camera up and how we position the car and take the images and make it work. Cool, stay tuned. So guys, for this shot, what we've done is we've positioned the car with the sun at like a 45 degree angle. With that, as you can see, there's no shadows on this side of the car. The shadows are on the opposite side of the car. We use a polarized filter on the actual lens. That polarized filter, we will keep turning and do three different variances of the photo. What that does, it actually cancels out a lot of the actual reflections and we'll take that into post and show you guys how to manipulate the actual photos in, in post to get rid of the reflections. It can also be done in one shot, but we're gonna show you guys a trick or two. Today, we literally set the camera up. We're gonna shoot the car at about 85 millimeters. We're shooting it with the mountains in the background. We're using a Sony a7R 3 with a 7200 lens on. In front of that, we've got a polarized filter. The polarized filter is going to help to eliminate the glare off the car. The settings is very basic, guys. Every scenic shot has got a different setting, so there's no formula for it. But for today, we're shooting at 1 over 125. We're shooting at F9 at ISO 100. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to bracket it. So we're going to expose it perfectly according to your histogram. One stop under and one stop over. We'll put that into post and we'll pull it together and uh, show you guys the process. Okay guys, so that's it for natural lighting. We're gonna take this now, take it into post and I'll show you guys how to get creative.
guys, here we've got our first image we shot on location. Location is uh, in and around the mountains of Cape Town. This is a parking lot that was situated close to a dam. As you can see, the dam wall on the edge there. Basically, what we did decide to do with this image is just to keep it very plain and call it commercial. What we wanted to do is to try and emphasize the car and um, in the amazing location that it's in. And what I did is, this is the image on the camera. You'll see a bit of a white border around here. This is just me cropping it a bit more, giving it a bit more headspace. And what I did is actually just cropped it, moved it around till I felt the composition was good for me. I then went and cleaned it up. As you can see, uh, I cleaned up quite a bit of the bush. I felt this bush was quite distracting. I filled in the mountains, I filled in the sky and um, just cleaned up the car in, in, in general. There was a couple of reflections from the from the markings on the floor and also some gravel and loose debris lying around. So I cleaned that up. After that, I went, I literally just desaturated. I took quite a bit of the blues out and, and darkened the greens a bit. It's just a personal choice. I then went and put a slight gradient level. I dropped the opacity of the gradient level to 31. If we pulled it all the way up, you'll see that is a more of a creative spin to it. A lot of guys like that. From a commercial perspective, it changes the color of the paint quite a bit. So I just went and I dropped that all the way down to like 30, 35%, uh, which I felt just gave it a slight tone. From there on, we went and we created a, what I call this a stamper layer. It's just merging all these layers together. I then darkened off the edges a bit more sharpened it and uh, added a bit more clarity, a slight bit of clarity, not going over the top with clarity. I then went and created a bit more of a vignette, just emphasizing the car, darkening everything around it off so that the car can pop out the photo. I then did a dodge and burn layer. All the dodge and burn layer does is it just puts a slight inferences on shadows and highlights on the car, just creating a stronger line to some of the car's features. And then I just added a curves layer, which just sharpens it up and just adds a bit more contrast. So if you look at the before and the after, it's basically just cleaning it up. You don't need to have extreme Photoshop skills to do this. This is a 100% personal creative preference, um, but uh, the route I decided to go with this image. So there we go. Let's move on to other images we shot on the same day. So this image, the image we shot literally just around the corner from the first image, basically went right down to ground level to shoot up against into the mountains shot it with a sony 7200g master it was shot at 200 millimeters to bring the background slightly closer uh, with that the car appears slightly bigger and gives it a nice depth of feel look to it that i was going for it's also some nice sand blowing around and creating like an atmosphere and a glow around the car which i actually really really like so basically what we did is I wasn't crazy about the telephone electric cables and the signs in the back. So I literally just pulled this into Photoshop, cleaned that up and added a slight gradient and a color tone to it, which literally took it from the first original image out of camera to that image. Also used a polarized filter just to turn it and just to cancel a lot of the reflections from the ambient poles and signs and boards that was around the car. Um, emphasizing the, the color of the red in the calipers and uh, just desaturating the rest. And that was the look and feel that I went for with this image. Let's move on to the next one. For our third image, basically turned the car, the car slightly more at like 60 degrees away from the actual camera, opened the doors, same setting, same location, different focal length, lifted the camera up a little bit higher just to get a different perspective of it. Once again, not crazy about the telephone lines and stuff, so I literally took that out just to clean the shot up and actually put the emphasize the car alone and not the actual ambient and the, the stuff around the car. And literally took it in into camera raw and just played around with some settings. 100% creative vibe and feel to it. Added a bit of contrast, added a bit of a vignette, took a bit of blue out, darkened the blues a bit, and uh, yeah, just make the car pop, sharpening up the wheels and adding some clarity to the actual car in the foreground. And uh, yeah, I took the car from out of camera, which was nothing wrong with it, but to a slightly more cleaner commercial looking image um, from my sake. So yeah, let's move on to the next. So what we did is we went to a wine farm just around the corner from where we shot. 
we literally went and looked for the actual farm that can give us a, a different feel and a different vibe to the actual shot. So what we did here is looking for structure, um, getting the background and the environment to play a bit more of a role. Found this arch, parked the car between it, literally looked straight into the sun, um, shooting this with a 7200 at 70 mil. This was then shot with the idea of giving, getting a natural flare from the sun and uh, getting a nice rim light from the back of the car. Also with the Sony and its amazing dynamic range, I could pull a lot of info out of the shadows, just brightening up the shadows a bit. Um, and uh, literally if we break this down, you'll see it's a very, very simple out of camera shot. We literally just cleaned it up, took a bit of the debris out from around the corner and actually just played around with it in camera raw. As you can see the raw image and the finishing product. Um, very, very nice, very simplistic. Um, framing the car actually very nicely and uh, I felt that it looked uh, very natural but uh, not over processed. In this shot as in the previous shot I used the same arch literally just turned the car 45 degrees went into the shadows to basically show you guys what uh, the Sony's amazing dynamic range can do. As you can see the, the, the actual shadows is very dark and you lose all the info in there. But with the nice dynamic range, it can bring it back. It can bring back the shadows very easily and actually get a lot of detail back. With this image, I started off by cleaning up the trees. I felt that these trees were distracting and actually ruining the shot for me. So I wanted to clean up the left-hand side a bit. So let you just remove the trees. I then went and took the dynamic range, put it into camera raw. And in camera raw, I pulled back a bit of the shadows. Um, also just highlighting certain areas of the car and just pulling back the shadows. I then went and I added a slight dodge and burn to certain areas of the car, which I thought, felt that needs to stand out a bit more. I then went and created an ambient, hazy feel from the left, from the right to the left, just with, to emphasize the direction the sun is coming from. It's a personal preference thing. I then went and added a slight gradient level, very, very light gradient level, just to create a bit of a color to it, just to warm the image up a bit. I also went and dodged and burned, so I basically darkened these areas here and at the bottom just to create like a hazy feel across the image. Uh, I added a curves layer just to add a bit more contrast to it and then finally I just cleaned it up. There was a couple of loose stones and debris and branches lying on the floor which I didn't pick up in the beginning so I literally just went and cleaned it up. So there's your before and your after. Just cleaning it up and bringing back the shadows, all done by literally just going into camera raw and playing around with the shadows because of the dynamic lights, you can bring back the car and, and showcase it nicely. Let's move on to our last and final image with the natural light segment. With regards to our last shot, we wanted to take it up a notch with regards to Photoshop. So we literally want to create a bit of motion. So with this, we did a, which I thought was quite a strong image at a camera. We literally had the car park, telling a story like it's either coming home or going to a location whether it's a wine farm or a hotel so basically what we did by starting off is we literally went and cleaned up the shot i went and turned off the back brake as the car was in park and was unfortunately the guy had his foot on the actual brake so it looks like it's parked so we turned off the back brake removed any other loose obstacles that i felt was distracting me from the photo we then went pulled the layers together and did a very slight camera raw setting just to create, just to remove some of the highlights. We then went and created motion. This is done by using a mask that you literally cut the car out, taking the background, creating a path blur so that it blurs from the closer you are to the camera, the more it will blur, the further you are, the less it will blur as motion moves away. And the further it is, it moves slower. So we did that. By doing that, we also cleaned it up. We blurred the shadows. We blurred the reflection of the trees that's very important from the tree that's right there. And we also blurred the road, the reflections of the road on the car, which gives it a more of a realistic feel to it. We then went and we spun the front wheel. We spun the back wheel just to show that motion, blurred the tires and the actual um, areas around that so that it looks more realistic. We then went and pulled the layers together, pulled them into camera raw, saturated the greens and the reds, pulled a little bit of the blues out. Um, and then what we did is created a haze from right to left. Once again, as the sun is coming from right to left, just creating a bit more of an ambient light to it and also popping the car out from behind that ambient. We then went and added a curves layer, which just adds a bit more contrast. And we go from 
a literally out of camera shot to a little bit more of a call it an advanced Photoshop movement shot, just creating some movement in the image and just creating a bit of a different feel to it. That brings us to a close with regards to natural light and some technology with regards to using Photoshop and uh, using the camera for dynamic range. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next segment. All right, guys. Chat soon. Goodbye. Okay,